Well, well, well. <clears throat> the episode <clears throat> that we've all been waiting for, <clears throat> episode number four, <laughs> Western Conference Podcast, myself, yeah, Big yeah. Body Cisco, my brother, Westafa, yes, and sir. our special guest, the legendary mm. George Fiji Vico. So how you doing, George? I am good. He's, see, <laughs> see, that's what we're talking the, about. You hear the bass in my voice right now? <laughs> Because you know he knows how to work that mic. And you guys already know. He's a legend for a reason. But how are yes, we doing sir. today, Feech? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I finally got to do the Western Conference podcast. So I'm excited to uh, hear all the things we're going to talk about today. <laughs> Look, so we have a plethora. A plethora. A plethora of questions that we would like to go down. But before we even do that, I think this is more to tell the people that we've been doing. Me and Western Conference, me and West been waiting for this moment to kind of sit down with all of, not just as our family, but you know, people see you guys as these artists and these legends and these people on stage, but this is actual family that that's we can right. sit down and talk what he does. So that's why I wanted to get down. Everyone who knows Jay Bug from everyone said, make sure when you get Feige in there, we get the Feige that all of us would like to know and love. Not the stage Feige. We want the Feige <laughs> that they're going to tune into this podcast for. <laughs> well, so you have to say some things on I, here, Feige. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to try my best. See, you look so shy now. This is so different yeah. for me. Well, this is is how it starts out. Right? <laughs> it's like a it date. It starts out like this. It's like a date. You know what I'm saying. You see? See, he's so shy right now. Now we got to pull the draws down. So, <laughs> for those who don't know who's been under a rock, George Fiji Ficoso has been doing this and been in the game for many, many moons. But what I wanted to get down with me and what Stavo was saying, we got to know about the humble beginnings in Hawaii and how you got started into the music game. Well, well you know, actually, no. So let's, let's even go back further before that in Fiji. In there. Fiji, yeah. So, so like I in was, the ho in the hospital room when he came out. <laughs> Why are you got? Come on, my mama could be. Yeah, I was about to say, mom. Let me mama shout out, mom. This, this, this yeah, way. take us back to Fiji, George. All right, so I started um, as a kid. You know, I always had this passion for singing. I used to sing so much. They used to, my family used to be like, "Shut up!" Yeah, you know, so you were that kid. I was that kid. Yeah, I just <laughs> felt like anybody on the radio, I'd be like harmonizing, be like, "Damn." Sometimes I just want to hear the melody. Yeah. So you knew melodies and harmonies at a young age. Yeah. I was like, so when my, my mom and her sisters would do little church uh, rehearsals together to do like a special song over there, I'd be like, you're off. You're off. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the slap will come. Yeah, right exactly. My, oh. So you had that tone already in you. You already had an ear for music at a young age. Yeah, I did. But, you know, at the same time, when you start off, thinking that you know stuff, then you realize as you get older, like, damn, I really don't know anything, yeah. you know? But it started off like that. So I started singing in church, and then uh, there was this um, little uh, competition. So Like a talent show. A talent show Got for it. the church. It's only church kids. Yeah. So Those are the worst ones, the badass <laughs> church kids. And they can all sing. of them can sing. So I just went up there all nervous. And yeah. And then I went up and I sang and then I won. So my mama decided back then that I was only going to sing for Jesus. <laughs> See, that's how it all starts. Oh, you're going to sing for Jesus, baby. <laughs> and so one night, you know, I went out. So my, I used to always go to a friend's house, the Tamani's house. It was uh, right up the road from my house. And I used to go over there as a kid, spend time with them. They had a family band. Their band used to gig. Yeah. So they... I started going with them, then they started like, okay, so there was this famous singer named Langani. He was a big singer, like our Michael Jackson at the time. What was his name again? Langani. He was okay. like a kid star. He was like the Fijian Michael it was Jackson. Sensation, yeah. Yeah. So he was just like killing the radio. So I, I started a lot of my so a lot a lot of singers, they start off by imitating other singers. Yeah. So he was the first one I imitated. And I realized I could imitate a lot of <laughs> <laughs> So you had him down to a T. I was like, I used to come up like, he's so like, So they used to be like, oh, my God, you actually sound just like him. I said, yeah, yeah. why don't you come up and do a, a couple of that song? So I went up to the barracks, went up there, started singing, and then people started putting $20, $10, $5, $2 in Slapping my, in money my on ear, you. slapping like money on me. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I could. I could do this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so at that time, you're thinking, okay, I'm getting paid. I mean, you got to understand. I got 20s a, on my eyeball. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm like six years old, seven, yeah. you know, seven years old. And finally, during the break, my mom, I didn't know my mom was looking for me. Yeah. She came all the way up to the, 
<laughs> the army barracks where I was singing. Because you're supposed to be singing for Jesus, well, first exactly. of all. Exactly. So you're supposed I, to be singing for Jesus. I didn't know what was going on. So next thing you know, the sergeant comes up, excuse me, is your name George Vicoso? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, well, there's a lady here. There's Mama Vicoso over there with a belt. She's waiting for me with my holding my brother, rest in peace, my brother Willie's hand, and just <laughs> <laughs> Had that look of death, like you about to get your ass whooped. I said, I'm going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> See, in the Polynesian household, you know what that look is, right, Wes? You, uh -huh. you get that eye and the little twinge of the right cheek is, is you definitely going to know your I ass know is going to be whooped. So this is the, this is the best part. So I went home. Like just we just did with this. So during the time I'm in the car, I'm getting boom, like, oh. You're getting side shots. Yeah. So finally, I waited till we got home. We got into the room. My grandfather's room is right here. Yeah. And I'm right next door. So there's just one wooden wall yeah. between us. So when my mama started hitting me, I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> so grandpa I'm can hear you. I'm screaming so that my grandpa can hear me. And then my grandpa says, says in Fiji, Vomitea, Vomitea, which means kill him, kill him. I don't want any grandkids. I thought that kill meant him. help. I thought that meant help. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, kill him, kill him. I don't want any more grandkids. Kill him. God and my damn. mom's like, <laughs> See, that's a Polynesian household for you. Man, that was like the most scariest thing for me. So, you know, from that day, you know, they knew that I was just so he was like, You're only gonna sing for Jesus. I gave my life yeah. for this, for you to sing for Jesus. I'm like, oh mom, please. So <laughs> finally as I grew older, she realized that it just kept growing on me. So, yeah. So I left home. I just took off. Went and lived on the side of the freeway. She was getting worried over me. And then they had to send me back to Fiji. This is after I came to LA. Yeah. Send me back home. And then after a while, they're like, are you going to behave now? <laughs> <laughs> Did you learn your lesson? I was like, uh, yeah. So I came back. And that's when I came to Hawaii. So you went from LA back to Fiji, then yeah, to Hawaii. Then to Hawaii. And then from Hawaii... I went back to ch singing in church yeah. again. It then, always goes back to the church at that point, of right? Of course. And then after that, I just started roaming around clubs again. Yeah, in Hawaii. And they were like, hey, bro. I was like, oh, I like to sing one song. Yeah, come on. Like open mics. Open mics. Yeah. So I, when they heard me sing, it was like, wow, bro. This guy can voice. <laughs> right? See, I could just imagine because at that age and at that time in Hawaii, Hearing Fiji's voice was the closest, the nicest thing close to getting pussy. <laughs> you heard that angelic this voice. <laughs> it's the sweetest joy. It's the sweetest joy. <laughs> so, of course, to hear you at that point in time, you have no, nothing's recorded at that time. This is all no, no, grassroots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when I, actually, before that, before that, I, um, during my time in Fiji, I went around, you know, roaming around the, the town and like always just being a vagabond. That's what I still am. You know, I still live kind of like anywhere, mm -hmm. you know. So I ended up joining this group called Root Strata. And then Root Strata is the, the group that um, wrote songs like Warrior of Love and. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So Rise and Stand. So those, they were like a, a reggae group that was about, you know, um, one love, political, you know, stand up for your right type yeah. stuff. So. I came from that, and then I came over back to, I left the group right as they released their first single, which I'm singing. Yeah. And I came to Hawaii. So you were like Teddy Pendergrass and Harold Mellon and Blue Notes. <laughs> <laughs> so you sang all the main parts and then left they ass when they wanted to release their well, album. Well, there were two of us. There was another brother of mine named Steve McCumber who was a great singer. Yeah. So he took over after me, and then he re-recorded that song since I'm not I wasn't part of the group but that song was number one for two wait minutes. wait 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 let me let me get this straight they took your voice off of the track and yeah. had somebody re-sing it yeah because they I, I only was on the single that came out on the radio that radio station was just beginning it was yeah. FM 96 back home and it was just beginning and we were the first local group to be released on that contemporary station and it was my voice that was the first song that came out of that group. And when they actually released the album, they re-recorded my part because I wasn't part of the group. No yeah. So they like took you out of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, of course. So basically know. they replaced Michael with Tito. It was like, look, <laughs> Michael left. No. <laughs> <laughs> like what was the case, now that we can look back on it, what was the drop off on vocal talent 
from the from when you left and who had ended up taking well, your place? The guy was my best friend, so Steve McCumber was a, a, okay. my best friend. So I actually took him with me. We both roamed into the the their their practice hall and yeah. joined the group together. So it wasn't, you know, what's crazy is between me and him, we could imitate every voice on We yeah. Are the World. Oh, wow. every 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 breakdown. We sang every part of We Are the World. I wish there was somebody that recorded it. Yeah, but I used to do the. The Bruce Springsteen. And oh, that was the best the part. Michael Jackson. <laughs> and then there we go. You know, the uh, Bob Dylan. There's a choice we make. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even to the Cindy Lauper, you guys Every getting everybody. Yeah. He, he had the Cindy Lauper down. <laughs> like, because we, you know, we were like 13 years old. Yeah. You know, back then. And that was the era of music you guys grew up into. Yeah. The we, are, the we are the world days. And, yeah. You know, so. who were some of the influences back in Fiji up to this point that was influencing to you to come into your own and your voice? I, drew, I grew up on. On gospel music, so Andre Crouch uh, was a huge, huge influence of mine, and on the street was Bob Marley. Yeah, and and then also Peter Tosh and Bunny Whaler. So we grew up on all that. And Third World, Third World, yeah, very shout intricate. out Third World, still still relevant yeah. to the day. Bunny they, Ruggs, they are my piece. Bunny yeah. Ruggs. That's my biggest hero, and as as far as like you know that era, yeah, because I could sound just like him. <laughs> <laughs> so that went on and then I, I grew up with that and then I you know and the Winans and then commission you know Fred Hammond you yeah. know Marvin Winans like so from there of course you got your the great Stevie Wonder who mm -hmm. was my ultimate you know that's my ultimate hero back absolutely then. songs in the key of life yes yes and I had the record yeah I used to play it and then and then my uncle turned me on to jazz stuff like uh, Wes Montgomery and um, you know, a lot of Louis Armstrong. Yeah. The old, you know, real old stuff that I used to just, he used to just play the record. And he's like, do you understand this? Can you hear it? Because you hear all these pieces and I, and of the I puzzle. And I was like, I don't know if I hear it, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know if you heard what he was trying to tell you to hear, I know, but you, I was like, you heard mm, something. I think, I'm, mm, you know, <laughs> this shit sound kind of crazy. But, yeah. But it was, it was important. Like Th Thelonious Monk. So that really got me to open my my mind to the creati creativity. Yeah. To just hear things that are out of the box instead of always just following the So you took a lot of elements from the jazz, from the from gospel, the jazz, from the reggae yeah. and kind of put it into your and own elements put it together. of your puzzle. Yeah, so that's part of my influence. And then I grew up on old old um what do you say uh the real old Fijian music. Oh, okay, like traditional. Traditional, mm -hmm. super traditional. Any type of traditional music, whether it was Samoan or Tongan or yeah. Fijian, that was my thing. You know, like chants. Yeah. And all those came into my head like, it was like Skittles, yeah. right? So it was like, whoa, I could put this with this. And, you yeah. know, and then so I started. The creative juices was flowing yeah, at that point. So yeah. I would take like a like a wannabe Timberland beat and put a chant over it. Got it. You know, so that's how we did um, gratitude and stuff. And and so I just kept doing it. And then some, some I just said, I'm going to go way back and just make this one kind of come in like Independence Day. Like I would just be talking and then all of a sudden it would the switch into the voices. Yeah, it would come yeah. in. Yeah. Super tradition, yeah. you know. And then there was somewhere I also, when I was in Redlands, I joined this uh, group, this high school group called the Festival Singers. I was a part of a 60-voice choir. Oh, wow. That year, 84, they won the national, like, award. Yeah. But, you know, you were one of 60, so nobody yeah. gives a shit. <laughs> you were just part of that 60. They were like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think, I, I mean, there's only a few black people right there. <laughs> and you was in the choir. Yeah, so I was in the choir, you know. So it was funny because my my big brother, he was the Etu. He was like the big star. Yeah. And he rushed like over a 1,000 yards in football, and he would play basketball. He was the athlete. He was the athlete yeah. of the year. And <laughs> when he comes out to play, I'm over there. Oh, see. <laughs> so we have a joke going. I used to be like, when we, start, when we used to drink. <laughs> Get him I a would, beer. I would sit over there. I'd be like, um, "Remember, too, when you was the big star, 
And, you know, I was like, looking like I was just part of the choir. How the tables have turned. <laughs> 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 now Etu got two bad knees, and you want me to do festivals. Like, God damn. So he used to look at me and say, you want me to kick your ass now? You want me to kick your ass later? I was like, kick my ass later. <laughs> yeah. But that was, that, was a, that was a big thing, you know. So that journey for me was a big um, establishing of just my ears. Yeah. And then it took me a while to really have a sound. Yeah. It was not until 97 when I actually. Oh, that late? Yeah. So I started back in early 80s singing. And then, you know, from late 70s, early 80s as a kid, coming into 90s, still trying to find, still imitating Luther yeah. Vandross. Looking for your identity Jerry at Levert, that point. Yeah, absolutely. Eddie Levert, of course. And then, and as we go into, you know, 97 is when I really said, you know what? Because the first album we did, my partner at the time said, like, we lost money. Yeah. So it was, the album was called Evolution, 1994. Classic and I album. was like, what do you mean? Yeah. Right? So I was like, we lost money. So I was like, you know what? I need you to give me control of the album and just tell me how much money we can spend on this album and I'll make it work. Yeah. So he gave me something like twenty nine or thirty thousand as a budget. That's back then budgets were huge. Yeah. That's when you had marketing so budget and all. I squeezed it all under twenty three. Thanks to my brother Michael Grande, who yeah. I owe my all to. And he helped me and uh at the time it was Tim Nelson and Bully Suarez. They were the two people that uh helped me develop that. Let me have the studio and I, I literally lived in that studio no place to go, n just slept on that couch yeah. until somebody had a session. Then I would go outside and just chill until it was all to myself yeah, again. Until it was your turn. So that's how it went down. And I was like, damn, you know, when, when that day comes. But I think the one thing that I can say right now is I never complained. Yeah. No matter where I was in, in my journey. I just felt like that was part of my making. Well, that I mean, those are like the early elements of you were talking about right. '97, and I needed it. Yeah. I needed, I needed stepping to, stones. Yeah, you know, be called a joke and all that yeah. stuff. Like those are the things that got me to really find who I was and question who I was. And then, born and raised was born. Whew, man, born and raised. Yeah, if you know, you know, because that born and raised is a legendary classic Fiji man. album. Yeah. And you know what? There was there was nothing coming out of Hawaii at that time that was yeah. like that. Well, there was Brother Walter, mm -hmm. which is born in the same studio. Yeah, which and studio is that? This is Platinum Pacific. It was off Kelmoko. Oh wow. Not the host, bro. <laughs> I say, all I know on that street is some hoes. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I know from that street. Things have changed on Kamoku. Uh, Sugar, if you're watching, I still go around looking for you every now and then. But uh, so it, there was a studio there, apparently. Yeah, it was like in the so back. Where, it was like, in the cut. It was like all the way in the cut. Like you, you, all you see is a garage until you go all the way to the back and there's one door. And Got then it. You open and there's a studio. And that's when I started. And I, I was like in there, like I had to go ask my brother if I could take a shower at yeah. his house. It was a struggle. Of it was a struggle. Yeah. It was a struggle, you know. And I, and and I, I'm grateful for all those experiences. Um, humble beginnings for sure. Yeah, you know, I've had humble pie my whole life, so that's why I have a compassion for these youngsters. Like they, if they ever lived my life, they would have given up many years well ago. especially in the social media world that we live in now yeah i think a lot of this generation not to be disrespectful but are lazy they wouldn't take the route that you've taken because a lot of them probably would have gave up halfway through what you went through yeah it's, it's it's rough but at the same time i want them to appreciate where they're at yeah and all the sacrifices that it took for them to be able to enjoy it now. It's, it's hard, though. For, for me, as a DJ, Wes, as a DJ, he could say, when they talk about sacrifice now, the younger generation, mm. they're talking about not having a laptop. That's their sacrifice. <laughs> They're talking about not being able to get students. Out. We're talking about you was just you was just on a freeway overpass. <laughs> I was on a freeway in overpass. L.A. A Fiji Literally. kid ain't nobody knowing. There was like, so yeah. the struggle then is a lot harder than it was, and people talk about struggle now. Yeah, and that's why I say when you know when people hear your story, which I do hope 
that the kids do watch this and say, you know what, what Feech came through to be in the stature that you are at now. Because is that when at the time you knew that you kind of made it when Born and Raised came out? Born and Raised was like during the making of it, I was just trying to make sure that I gave my all. And at that time, that's all I knew. Yeah. And that's all I gave was everything I knew in one record. Uh, being influenced by my Jamaican family, uh, thanks to Tony Gitts on Naughty yeah. Girl. Tony Gitts, um, forever, you know, that's one of my first Jamaican brothers. And then meeting Bonafide later on. Yeah, shout out Bonafide. Yeah, so all the, all, all the Jamaican people that I met during that time and, and the reggae artists, they pretty much uh, shaped it. And then, I, you know, the, the one person, the Manal Company, they yeah. were the very instrumental in um, bringing me up and encouraging me. It's, Specifically, uh, the one guy, uh, Danny Kennedy, my brother Danny yeah. Kennedy, he was very instrumental in pushing me to go forward and to be heard by everyone. So he was very instrumental in that, and I'm grateful to him for that. See, but I'm glad you brought that up because that kind of segued into me, me and Wastava was talking about. Like, people look at reggae, like, so you're, you're doing this all in Hawaii. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about your Jamaican brothers having, you know, the Jamaican influence on it, too. Yeah. At that point in time, like Wes was saying, there wasn't really an island reggae at that time. Not really. No, it was it was just uh, it was called Jawine music. Absolutely. Then. That's what I was just about to say. Yeah, it was Jawine music. And Brother Walter uh, was one of the key foundation Then Hoi Khan and Manau Company. There were all other groups that were part of that whole thing. But these were the key components in Capena, of course. Yeah, shout out Capena. Older brothers, you know, so them having all their different flavors in there really shaped the, the Jawai movement. <clears throat> so when I when I came in, I clarified a little bit more of the reggae, mm -hmm. you know, the, the sit down, you know. Well, t take us through that because yeah. the transition has to, because yeah. like you got that Jawai music at the time, was that accepted? By the Jamaicans and the reggae scene no, at that time. No, no, no. It, it, it was somewhat, it was somewhat accepted, but of course, they were like had their ways. What the blood clot? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> absolutely. They didn't understand why we were so joyful in it. Yeah. But the this is the this is the flip side to this whole thing. They said one love. Yeah. And we felt one love. Yeah. But as soon as we start to progress. It's too low. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> too many major chords. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, is their love one love, and then I guess our one love is not. You know what I mean? So that, that was my understanding of it because reggae at the time, well, maybe Wes can um, correct me, but they were more political. If their one love was more political, more of a message, and yeah. what island reggae and Jawaian reggae was was more happy. Yeah, so and we had like we added game. ukulele and stuff, mm -hmm. which is they were like. What is that? Elements, you know? different yeah. elements. From elements, that. yeah. Right. Because we only added elements that we relate to. Familiar with. Yeah. Familiar with. So that 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 was our thing. And our thing was like, get the family together, everybody barbecue, and we just bring, bust out the guitar and the ukulele. Absolutely. So these songs were made specifically so that in the backyard, when you're just chilling, you can just come, never going to give you up on the ukulele. Yeah. No matter what your mama say. And everybody's just like, yeah. They, and they, just, they yeah. lost it. You know what I mean? They got into the happy mood and everything. Whereas Jamaica is the foundation of reggae. Yes. So <clears throat> we're like the little the little nephew, you know, yeah. like the little, little brother. So it was like, of course, we're never going to perfect the style. We just had to make it ours. But see, everybody else... Formed their style afterwards. Got it. Like, good example, reggaeton. Yes. Right? We've been around <laughs> since late 70s yeah. <laughs> doing the same chalangalang, you yep. know, but we still haven't blossomed. Yeah. Because the one thing that's always um, hard about our culture is we can never come together. Come on. We, see, that's what we got to talk about. Yeah. I'm glad you brought it up because that's what we have to talk about because that was next of our questioning where, you know, we talk about the Polynesian people coming. The hardest part is to come together. Yeah. We see reggae tone come together. We see, you know, Jamaicans when they do the reggae. Mm -hmm. Why is it so hard for Polynesians? Is it an ego thing? Is it, is it a pride issue with our demographic and our culture? Well, we do have one thing in common with Jamaica and everybody. Crab in a barrel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. People go 
push this one down to get up here and then you go push the other guy down so it's never people just feel like like there's only room for one or two of us yeah, and I, I never and they that. could never understand how wide this, the table is and how large the spectrum is that we can all we say can it all, again fee say yeah. for the people in the back that didn't hear yeah. you because <laughs> Yeah, That's it's, they, huge. they don't realize. And my my understanding of this is because I grew up in Fiji and there was one radio station. And one radio station, I can listen to Jim Reeves. I can listen to Bob Marley. I can listen to, Re listen to Ray Charles. I can listen to um, uh, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, all in one day. All in on one station. station. Yeah. Wow. So that's why I'm like, uh, why can't we all see this? Yes. They're all entertaining us. In our own different personalities, we're all relating to the music one way or the other. Yeah. Some like this one more than this, but we all exist. They all exist, and they're all successful. Yeah. So why can't we come with our own style and be accepting of one another and just say, yeah, yeah that's our brother, man. Yeah. yeah. And just understand that, look. It's always the total opposite of that. Yeah. It, it never is like, oh, bro, he think he's freaking way beyond, like he's way beyond now. Exactly. Like, Things is better than us. And then the worst part when social media came is the whole concept Oof. of we're going to the next level. Like, wait. Who's doing better? There, what level? <laughs> what level? Yeah. You know, like people used to tell me, you know, one day I'm going to be up there with you. I'm like, up where? I'm yeah. right here. Come here and hug me. Yeah, exactly. Like, hold me. Like, what the? F <laughs> exactly. What is going on? Like, where am I supposed to be? Where did you put me that I'm not? But I think that's why your longevity in this game is because you have that mindset. Yeah. Like you, I mean, people who don't know, you've helped the Jay Bugs, the Common Kings, the all the people that are up there, that people always try to compare you guys. Yeah. And me and Westafa, we go on tour with a lot of these artists where we're in this thing where there's enough for everybody. There is. And what I don't get is that way you, more you, you than work enough. with artists now, are you trying to get that message to the younger generation that's saying, yeah. what do I got to do to get to that next level? Yeah, I'm just trying to say, look, the next level is your level. Whatever you're trying to do, it's your very best. That's your next level. Mm -hmm. And whatever you learn more from there, that'll be your next level. But it's not against another person. It's you against yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your level, there's nobody that can do you. Only you. There's only one of you. That's the most beautiful thing about the way God made everyone is we. he made us exactly one of one yeah not even twins are the same yeah they can repeat after one another and say the same words but they're not the same yeah because the dna is that specific so you are that specific wow when did you start to see the divide in the music as far as the, the culture the, the divide is up here Mental. in people's minds yeah people just create this huge monster that doesn't even tell the truth and People start believing that lie, and they start thinking like, "Oh, he's trying to be all up in my." You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, oh, you know, the even the the thing like, oh, make his name big, and then his small. I'm like, Ooh. make my name small. I don't give yeah. a shit. You can make my name small. It's I am not imaging thing. It's exactly all, uh, the it's whole like popularity contest. Instead of point. just saying, "Look, here they are." Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. Because they're you're gonna love all of them. Yeah. But no, there's this big name, and then there's small name, and then there's these like small little captions. Oh my God, I don't even know what the hell to think. Like, you can't even read it. Yeah. <laughs> like, Can I have a tissue or something? Yo, yeah, we, oh yeah, we got a tissue right here. <laughs> I don't know if it's the AC in here, but I'm starting to thaw out. Thank you, sorry. <laughs> but yeah. So, like, like you were saying, um, me and Wes see it all the time, and I said it was good that you came in because. A lot of this generation, like you see through social media where they do have these competitions where it's like this artist better than that artist or what can I do to top that artist? When in, in reality, it's like it's all music at the, at the end of the day. And it it's is. all your creative expression. And, and you, you can enjoy. You can, you can enjoy all of it. Yeah. You can enjoy all of it. And, 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 and there's no need for, you know, I, I like this. You know, I, I bang this nigga more. Like, yeah. No, sir. That's fine. That's okay. Well, not everybody likes that person. Somebody like the other dude. Yeah. You know, somebody like the other girl. They, and it's okay. We it's can different all, strokes with different all, folks. Yeah, we can all coexist. Yeah. And everybody can be successful. There's no need for, you know, well, I don't like him. No. You know, for me, the only thing that 
I don't want our artists to ever forget is we are a small group of people. Man. And that Say type that. of mentality only makes us even smaller. Say that. And we don't need to be out here dividing us already this small. And we're, now all of a sudden we're like minute. Yeah. Like, what'd you do? It was your way of thinking. And, that, and that's what created It's definitely the division. mindset. It's definitely the mindset. Yeah. Because we also was talking, me and Wes were talking about the Grammy issue. Yeah. Uh, the Grammy issue with Soja winning the best reggae album this year. And I said, yeah. you know what? Maybe we want to ask your take on it because people are starting to have a problem with American reggae. So like we were deciphering between American reggae, island reggae, and reggae. Now you have one category that's kind of splitting everybody together. Right, Russ? Yeah. And, I, you know, actually the Kings, as you know, we all know. Comic the Kings. Nominated yeah. Boog was nominated twice. So mm -hmm. we're in the realm yeah. of recognition, you know. Mm -hmm. So like we're in the vicinity of yeah, like well, being recognized. On yeah, a, I would on a, say this year was probably the first year that... Uh, it wasn't an artist from Jamaica that won it. Yeah, yeah. And 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 that should not even be like a thing. You yeah. know what I mean? It should be just grateful that a reggae group won. You know, like they're perpetuating something that started all the way back before even these right. artists yeah. Yeah. that come out. They were perpetuating what they learned from listening to Bob Marley and Peter Tosh and Bunny Whaler. And that's all they're they're just they're just perpetuating mm -hmm. that. So if you're gonna be mad at them for that, that's Pen. on you. Yeah. But being mad at them for being white, that's a little too petty for me. Well yeah. that and we were talking about just the recognition of the Grammy alone, that they're kind of putting that as yeah. they're being solidified as an artist if they're nominated or if like you've been in the game how long, Feej? And you 30, know, to 30 see that plus years. you wouldn't need a Grammy nomination to kind of like dictate your career. I really don't career. care about Absolutely. it. Absolutely, right. I don't. I, I I don't. You know, it's a horrible thing for artists. Yeah. To be one, it's the same thing. We're going right back to that thing. Yeah. Only one of us can win. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute, are we playing bingo? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is not bingo. You're playing with people's lives and people's livelihood. So be generous to spread it out and make it wider so that other people can be recognized for their efforts in the same genre. It's so crazy. Now, just because the Grammys recognized one group instead of a Jamaican group, that's, the, that's on the Grammys. Yeah. But do you know how you win in the Grammys? No. The committee, right? It's oh, your committee. peers. Yeah. So these are people voting. It's not voting. the yeah. people voting. It's your peers. That's how they won. They won because other artists and musicians voted them in. Yeah. The Grammy committee. No. the So artists. all the Grammy Awards mm -hmm. consist of its members, and yeah. its members are all artists. And members. Yeah, that's right. Nothing members, to do with the public. Not committee members. Yeah. Yeah. So other, other groups said soldier X amount of times more than they said you know, Gramps or uh, Sean Paul yeah. or somebody, yeah. They said, Soja Moore. Yeah. So that ballad came out, and that was the result. It wasn't voted by the people. Right. It was voted by its members. And, and there's so many different elements to, on top of what you right. just said, where they have to be released at a certain time. Right. They have to have so many percentage of yeah. reggae songs right. on their album to be sold. You think artists have time for that yeah not too many artists have time for no. that you need organization you need if to have that's, if that's their end goal right like if their end goal is to win a grammy then okay yeah go through all the steps that you got to take if to you get a if grammy. everybody took that step and went and tried to influence yeah. all the other like be the number one jamaican reggae artist yeah to all the rest of the artists they would, be, they would be winning every year and it's so crazy because me and wes were, were saying that they don't even broadcast the best reggae album like they had that before where they didn't even do the best hip hop album. Yeah. And now they're starting to say, okay, well, there's a little popularity to it where it's just it's crazy because the only thing that I feel that artists get from winning a Grammy is better billing and better pay That's on it. their next thing. Because they can That's say it. Grammy Award winner, That's Grammy it. nominated yeah. going forward. That's so it's it. So I, like I said, what were we talking about at West with what the Grammys were? They shouldn't hold, you know, the, their whole career hinging over a Grammy nomination. Exactly. Yeah. That's the worst thing. Yeah. Like, did you really work this hard just so you can win a yeah. Grammy? Then your job is done. Just yeah. retire. 
You know what I mean? You sp- you're here for a lifetime. This is a lifetime achievement. Well, I think this it is- was I think it was Drake. He pulled his album from the uh, the Grammy nomination. Oh, Drake did. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And it's you know like we talk about you know when you play sports, there's a participation award. There's, right. And now that we have like the Oscars, the Grammys. Everyone's kind of holding a candle to it. We're like, oh man, I have to win. That's like the pinnacle of their career. Yeah. We're talking to you that's been in the game over 50 years and have. Damn, who's He was born. He was born. Yo, but I'm saying, you got an artist that's legendary as far as you, where you could give a shit if you win a Grammy or not. And you'll still get the same billing as somebody that won two or three Grammys. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, it's like, it shouldn't be important. Yeah. The important thing is the impact that you have as an artist to your. To your audience that's the real the real the real accomplishment how much how many lives did you touch yeah how many lives did you help change in the in the course of your your musical life i don't even want to say career because yeah. career is something that ends your musical life your musical journey oh i like that say that so not a career your musical no, life your musical life your musical yeah. journey because you have made this your mission yeah for the rest of your life so that's until we can't breathe no more. This is our way of giving to our back to our public, back to our audience, to the people that gave us that time of day. Yeah. To download, to put our their put our music in their ears and their hearts, and believe what we believe for that moment, for that three minutes and thirty seconds. Yeah. They took that time to say. I love it. Exactly. I I feel this way. And sometimes, depending on the power in your music, sometimes you're helping people not commit suicide. Or some people be like understanding that, you know what, there's a better tomorrow. You're giving them hope. So what is your what is your purpose? If it's just booty, then go ahead and sing that booty thing. Get all the booty you want. But if you just want, if you really understand the broad spectrum of, of of musical reach that you can have, yeah, then be about it and stop thinking about that one accomplishment. You know how many times people have recognized and try to stick me on the, like they, I, I don't believe all that stuff. Like yeah. people say, legendary. That's great. That's cool. I'm still here. Yeah, I'm not dead. Yeah. <laughs> they, you know what I mean. There's nothing legendary about me. Yeah. After I'm gone, if that's what you want to call me, that's fine. But I don't feel that way. I feel like. But I think that goes back to like what we talk about. When like we, we do shows. And when I say, you know, I, I put a lot to call somebody a legend. Yeah. And I think, you know, you being the artist that is being called the legend, of course, you wouldn't want to be you know, like, oh, don't do that. But yeah. as someone as a fan. Humble guy. That's the humble. Hum, Malo Fiji. humble Fiji. We want, we, <laughs> want the, we want the beer Fiji. But, but this, is, this is the thing, though. My, my 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 mentor, Dr. Adrian Ewan, said it best to me. He said, I'm just a beggar telling another beggar where the bread is. That's Ooh. exactly it. I don't want to, like, if I found a piece of bread here, that's I'm going to let you know. This is where it is. See, yeah, but so. in this game, everyone not has that mentality. Well, hopefully, Especially. hopefully it can grow. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully we can change that, you know. I mean, it's just one person, but the more people that do it, you know, like right now with, with, with all these youngsters that's coming up, like Maoli, who's powerful yeah. coming up. Shout out Maoli. Josh Tatofi coming up, powerful. Jay Bug. Like they're they're coming into this this beautiful experience on their own and they're growing and, and you know, and I can't even tell you the green and all these great, you know, everybody's coming up yeah. doing their thing and it's beautiful. And if we just allow everybody to just do what they do and be themselves. Yeah. Everybody going to buy it because you know what? It's a lifestyle and a lifestyle is not singular. Yeah. A lifestyle is go to the beach or go to work. Yeah. It's, that's our mentality. We, we're multidimensional, we're multitask people. Some of us, a lot of us come from single uh, uh, family homes mm-hmm. and our mother did everything for us or our dad did everything for us. Yeah. And that music is what keeps us together and makes us feel that it's okay that that, that person's not yeah, there. Yeah, the expression. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. If, if your dad's not there, it's okay because the music is gonna made feel. me feel whole mm-hmm. because that's when we got together and we felt like a family. But with that said, where do you see the state of island reggae right now? I think it's coming It's coming out beautiful. You know, Because you, you, you're a pioneer of this. Like We talk yeah. about the, the, all the artists that you just mentioned right there, too. My personal opinion upon top of that is all these artists are right there. Yeah. They have the same appeal that these mainstream artists have. And, you know, I know we hate talking about it, but I think mainstream and being a good act in Hawaii 
is a definitely different thing because I think they want to have that mainstream appeal. How do yeah. they get across that line to say, okay, now I have the pot line because I have the whites, the blacks, the Mexicans, the Filipinos mm -hmm. buying the music and not just our Polynesian people? Well, we, we the one thing that we need to understand is this. Mainstream is still an opinion. Tell them. It's still an opinion. We're mainstream. Yeah. We can be real mainstream if we get larger. I wanted you to say that. Population. That's why I said it. Mm -hmm. You know, the new ones coming up right now, the Johnny Sweets, the Fears. Yeah. More. Look at Spawn. You know, he's sm he's smashing, he's back in the album mode. He's, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Like, more of us, like, people don't even know. Boog's been, like, camping, writing <laughs> stuff. Like, Shout dude, out my brother Jay Boog, man. You already know. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's a, it's, it's an evolve, it's an evolving thing. And until we start to let each other just be themselves and grow into the monster that yeah. I know they are, then we're going to have a community. And once we have a community, that becomes a genre, that becomes a style. Right now, there's not enough of us because we're not even allowing others to grow. Yeah. We're not giving the time. And that's of why day. I was like, when you say evolving artists, you see the growth in these artists from yes. from the the early J Bugs to where J Bugs at now, from yeah. the early Comic Kings to to the artists that you work with. That's why I wanted to see when you work with the early J Bug. Did you see what was going to transpire into what Bug is now into one of the other art artists that you work with? No, of of course we didn't know. I yeah. didn't know, you know, like I just know that the intention is there. Mm -hmm. Got it. And my intention is to take them to the their their fullest capability potential. that's like yeah. you just give the guidance and then it's yeah like i'm i'm giving them what i learned in the 30 years of my life and i condense it as much as i can to try and give it to them in the short amount of time that they're with me because like they said that you can lead a horse to water but you <laughs> can't make them drink it shout out all my tongans out there you would kill me right now with that cliche i'm tonguing boy i know that's why what's said wrong it? with you so, so, so I, I i have a question yeah. um as far as uh, like we're talking about reggae music and and island reggae and stuff like that, do you consider our music to be an island reggae category, or would you just put it I, as reggae? I, I feel we're we're island reggae, we're island rock. I think we're island everything. Island hip hop. We're mm -hmm. island hip hop. We're island. The thing about it is the location of that DNA. But putting that island in front of it does that hold us back? That's the question. No, because the whole world is an island, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? Like the whole world is now. You just call it a country. Yeah. There's water. There's that's an island. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we got to get out of the mentality because they keep condensing us to like as if the islands are only in the Pacific and the yes. Caribbean. Like, yeah. Get out of here. We're all island from time to time. There we all love the summer. We all love the and the only difference is we get to celebrate that summer with that sun. All year round. Yeah. That's the only difference. <laughs> we don't get snow, but there are places that 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 are part of us, like Aotearoa, mm -hmm. that celebrate the winter and the snow, and and there are places like uh, 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 up, up in Australia where our our indigenous brothers over there. See, but I'm glad you brought that up with New Zealand and Australia because yeah. not just the islands of Fiji, Tonga. You you go to New Zealand and do a yes, show. You go to yes. Australia and do a show. Yes. We've been out there to do shows. It just shows the, the wide spectrum that we were yes. talking about. Our Aboriginal brothers yeah. there and then all our one talk people out there in uh, in New Guinea, you know, and uh, um, Solomon Islands and uh, uh, Vanuatu. Like these are all, and then you go all the way to the Marianas, to our Guamanian family. Yeah. Like, so it's a huge, huge like spectrum. Yeah. Of not just artists, but people. But you're We're, out there doing like music with like you. They just recently singled Three Houses Down. Yeah, like they had a brand new single and, and saying working with those artists in New Zealand, in Australia. Yeah. Do you take what you've learned and kind of instill in it? Because I know yeah. going out there, me, I was like, man, there's a lot of talent out here that's untapped. So I take what I learned and I learn from them too. Because Absolutely, they're they're badass. Yes, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like their their mind and the way they think is something to. For me to learn from you know what i mean there so new zealand is the largest combination of island people in the world polynesian micronesian yeah. Melanesian shout out new zealand world, man you know what i mean and australia is right there the migration so that's like our little version of america yeah right? like their mainland yeah there, so yeah. that's like, <laughs> that's the motherland you yeah. know what i mean yeah. it's the largest continent 
you know, in the world, in Australia. You know, it's crazy. Like, like the largest island continent. You know what I mean? It's, it's a like, beautiful thing. Man. It's definitely because they have a lot of talent out there. But when you are working with artists, what are you looking for in an artist to say, okay, I'll give them a little bit of the Fiji on it. You know, you sprinkle some Fiji on it. Because you work with a lot of artists from yeah. Nancy Fafita, from all these artists you work with. Like, yeah. how do you say, okay, I'll work with you? And how do you say, no, I won't work with that? Well, one of the things that I try to relate to with artists, and it could be also my downfall, is how are you, like, representing yourself as you know, I, I believe individual. in culture, yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, I have to answer as a Fijian for being Fijian, for even having the audacity to carry the name Fiji. Yeah. I gave that name, I took that name on because it was just to give credit to where my birthplace, that's where my you came birthright. from. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I did. I didn't do it so that I can be like, I'm yeah. Superman. No, it was to say, you know what? My and that's an element is, that you look for in yeah, the artist. Yeah, so my name is important, but my birthright is more important yeah. because at the end of the day, this place gave me life and it also gave me love. So this is my way of saying thank you Yeah. through my musical accomplishment, all credit goes to It's like to your Fiji. give back, you're paying it forward. All credit goes to yeah. Fiji. So it's not really coming to me, it's going back to my birthplace. So what I try to find in artists is how connected are you to that? To that, your background. To, to, yeah, to that root of yours. And when they are not, is that when you don't work with them? Yeah, kind of. It's like, okay, so you're trying to do... Because they uh, could be like, nah, I'm... I'm yeah, we can all, yeah, we can all get up and do booty music and mm -hmm. I love you and you love me and all that stuff. Yeah. But what what are you... What is your end What is your end result as an artist to perpetuate? Like, you have to be... The one thing that I try to push is language. Mm -hmm which I speak fluently in my language in Fijian. And the other thing that's important is your, 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 your culture, how we care for each other, which is why we've survived for thousands and thousands of years is, I mean, call it what you want, follow yeah. la or whatever. <laughs> hey. So see, but were you saying that? Yeah. There's a lot of artists that were raised in the States that don't speak fluent Fijian, Samoan, Tongan, that, and whatever yeah. the thing. So like, you know, not that it's like a, a bad thing for them, but there's a lot of kids watching now that probably can't speak Samoan or can't speak fluently. And that's in their okay. Language. Yeah. That's okay. But you have to have some type of element that links you back to your to DNA, your culture. to who Got you it. are. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense. And that's when I really want to mess with you, like, because you are going to be a, a great pillar for that. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it can be a downfall. Yeah. Especially, like, if you're talking about shooting another person. Like, Ooh, nigga, I'm about to go, exactly. you know, ride on these. Look, <laughs> you can ride on them niggas, it's not with me. Yeah. And that's what I tell these you artists, like, especially me and West Stop, we get music sent to us all the time, and I'm sure you do as well, to say, hey, how come you don't play our music? And mm -hmm. me and you go through it every day. If you're not talking about the certain things that, yeah. you know, I'm all about, you know, family, party, and having a good time, living life to the fullest. Yeah. We, Me and West, as Western Conference, we get songs that are, Talking about other hoods, yeah. Representing Bloods, representing Crips, representing yeah. this. I just personally, and I'm sure I can speak for West. Yeah. I can't play something like that. Like the same thing with me is like my whole purpose is to perpetuate us and to raise us up and to raise us. You can do all the music you want. Just be proud of who you are and understand that you come from some parents. You come from somebody. You know the the. The fact that somebody worked hard to get you to be even born in, mm -hmm. in America. Yeah. That person made a sacrifice. Just show me you appreciate yeah. that. And I'm cool with you. See, yeah. but I'm glad you said that. So what do you say to somebody that says, that's watching them? I mean, fuck these old dudes. I don't want to yeah. hear none of that. Yeah. Tell me how I can get, you know, the likes and stuff like that. Like, that's what we go through as yeah. being in the game for so long. We have to also consider, look. Somebody's watching, it's like, look at these three old dudes talking about shit that they're talking about back in the day. Yeah. The younger generation want to know, okay, fuck all that. What can I do now? What little gems can I get from Fiji, who's been doing this for many moons, to say, okay, look, I might not have the culture part, I might not have to, but I still want to do what I do. What can they take away from you saying, okay, this is how you further your way in, in that realm? What I, what I could share with them is just understand that you don't have to work with somebody like me, but in order for you to make it, it takes a tremendous amount of sacrifice on your part to be able to accomplish 
And understand that even when you accomplish that, if you ever look up, there's a long stair. Yeah. And that stair goes all the way up. Them stairs go keep going up as long as, and you can keep accomplishing everything. But at the end of everything, you're going to realize that it was just your will yeah. that <clears throat> created that. Them stairs that you looked up, that's really your intention. A lot of That's, kids are taking the those elevator. Are your beach. dreams. A lot of take. A lot yeah. of kids are taking the elevator and taking yeah. the escalator right now. <laughs> yeah. and trying to take the easy route. Yeah, but the thing is, there's no shortcuts. But I think Every, social media is the shortcut. In my in opinion. one sense, in but, my opinion. But but in one sense it is. But at the end of the day, there's no shortcuts. You have to go through each step. As you progress as an artist, as you record the record, there has to be a certain amount of quality that will give you that appeal. If yeah. you want to be mainstream, well, here's the mainstream yeah. frequency and mix and master. Yeah. That's what you have to get to. And when you actually accomplish that, then you have to pretty much have a, a, a following, right? So yeah. all these, there are no, there are no shortcuts. And no matter follow, how much when you say following, yeah, I always say artists they're as good as their buzz. So if they have a nice social media presence, yeah. it's crazy how not everybody where there's a talent that's not as talented as somebody that doesn't have a social media following, yeah, and is so much more talented than the person who does have that buzz. That makes yeah. sense to you? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, like talent is always gonna come shine through. Yeah, you know? I yeah, mean, especially somebody, through the shortcut. Talent yeah. will always sh show, but longevity is where the shortcut will kick in whatever you yeah. took a shortcut on you're going to have to make it it'll come to, you got to make up for it somewhere yeah. it's going to show <laughs> because up one way or another. that that road will not end yeah. and if you keep wanting it more that road will say okay by the way you took a shortcut yeah. here here's the actual path yeah and then that's when that's when you have to say okay i have to do it yeah and i'm for in order for me to cross that you know what I mean? For for so, time for time's sake, we don't got a lot a lot more time. But what I wanted to know is that you saying longevity, you saying on this, the top three artists of all time, and you personally, this is just gonna come out of left field with it. Who are top three artists, dead or alive, that you would either wanted to work with or work with, on the top of your list? You said Stevie Wonder was one. Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, and Bob Marley. See, but Bob's always on. Well, everybody. yeah, that answered one of my questions because you know the, you know we be mixing and stuff. A lot of the conversations that we be having is, oh. Lucky or Bob, and I'm like, no disrespect to Lucky, but for me, Lucky's great. I love yeah. Lucky. I, I met Lucky. I had hung out with him. He's a great person, you know. But Bob is the actual originator of the style of reggae. That and I'm glad all, you said that that you hung out with Lucky. So yeah. out of all the artists that you hung out with, and I love him. Yeah, I love him to death. Like for instance, rest in like, peace, Lucky. Rest man. in peace, Lucky Dubay. Yeah. He's the Pacific's Bob Marley. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean, because he related to us in a way where we just lost our mind yeah. for a minute you know we just you know especially with um freedom yeah. fighters standing on their bones <laughs> like, ah! yeah. you know what i mean absolutely yeah he was about he was about the people and i i will always love him for it but that is all coming stemming from what bob started yeah you know stand up rise up stand up you know uh, get up stand up stand up for yeah. the right all those songs you know we refuse to be what you wanted us to be you know we're nope. talking about history, like yeah. Bob Marley, Lucky Dubé. Like you, you're still in studio, still doing work, still putting out songs. Like and what I still got a long way. Ex to go. I was about to say, what keeps you motivated to keep staying in the studios and making sure the younger artists get the sound that you want? Well, I, 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 I always look to what more can I do, um, not only as an artist, but as a person that will be able to give back. To my community you know i always think about how we can make this beautiful thing bigger mm -hmm. you know this it's growing and it's beautiful but the more we collab the more we get together the more we love one another support one another and support one another unequivocally yeah. <laughs> with no hidden agendas exactly like <laughs> like i'm trying to do it you know because you know we're gonna get them girls yeah exactly like, get get, get I wanted to bring up one thing. Um, it's kind of like this thing that's been going around, and it's, uh, you know, a lot of homies always want to have the unreleased. Yeah. You know, and so how do you feel about that, like, as far as, you know, music getting leaked and stuff like that? Because I know it's I happened I learned, to everybody. I learned that lesson during Born and Raised. 
The reason why Born and Raised became, so in one year we sold over 100,000, over 100,000 CDs back then. For Born and Raised. For Born and Raised. Yeah. And I was making $8.50. From each. Per CD. Wow. And I got mine off Napster, but that's. <laughs> all of that <laughs> came because my community, La Ye, mm -hmm. leaked it. The three, four songs. So by the time that record came out. They already knew it already. They was waiting. Yeah. They Where's wanted the to hear the finished product. Yeah. And their whole pride was, bro, I got the yeah. Yeah. original yeah. untouched. But do you feel like the leaks are almost, what, uncharted I think, promotion for I the think, album? I think it's overrated. Yeah. The one thing that we forget is you always got to go back to your beginning, right? I just want to be heard. Yeah. And the fact that my neighborhood is like smashing my record in, in the That's not even released yet. Yeah. It's not even released, but they're <laughs> pumping it in the community dance and the and our you know, our little get togethers yeah. and stuff. You know, even the church dance, you know, at the Mormon church over here. Yeah. It's like everybody's like, yeah, like yeah, boy. I'm like they just loving it and you know what? Who am I? You know, that music is for us. But you the artist, damn it! No, but you're like who? Who? Look, who got like your boy before? Why am I? Why am I gonna? Why am I gonna hold on to something? Yeah, and then be like, here you go. Yeah, look, we're island people. If you walk by my house and I didn't ask you to come eat when we're eating, yeah, I'm selfish. Yeah, got it. And that's the mentality. And that's the mentality. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, you don't gotta give the whole record out. Just <laughs> give him a slice. Give him a slice. Give him a slice. Yeah. Hey, it's a little something I'm working on. Out of Born and Raised, what's your favorite track you ever wrote and sung yourself? Mm, I can't. Your favorite track, because there's so many of them. I, I don't know, because they're all in different part, parts different of your life. Time, yeah. yeah. And what I was going through. Okay, I'll give you a better question. What song have you written for someone else that you wish you kept? I think I know the answer. I know. Me too. I was about to say the same. <laughs> we have an over under on this one, so we'll, we'll see what he says. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think, Wes? I, I don't. You know what? Fiji is such a humble guy, and it's I, a little too I, humble I know, for me. I know he doesn't really put it out there. Awesome. Boog's biggest song is this guy on the hook. T tell him what it is. Let's do it again. Tell him what it Boog is. Boog was in the studio. He from what I, know, I know, but look, he was stuck. here's here's he, the part. Here's the part that I need to explain about. Uh -huh. But but he was stuck. I couldn't have sung it better than Boog. I couldn't. But you was on the BVs though. But look. He went and re-sang that stuff when he went to Jamaica with Don yeah. Corleone, and they went and did it. And let me tell you, that was a beautiful, beautiful gift. Man. Back to a writer when you can take something like that and then put your sound on it, and then it became the monster that became. I know for a fact that I couldn't have done that. So I'm cool. Just like, for instance, this is the untalked about stuff. I wrote a hook for Tyrese called, How You Gonna Act and Leave Me Now. See, that's what I was going to ask you next. Right? Okay. Like, for Tyrese Gibson. For Tyrese Gibson. <laughs> A.K.A. Cry Reese. It, it, yeah. it, 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 it sold more than any other single he put yeah. out. But at the same time, I couldn't have sang it better than him. You know what I mean? Steph, I don't know. I'm just saying. I, I don't know. Yeah. You throw that's up for debate. That's yeah, de very I'm, debatable for sure. I know, but I'm just saying, like, I think humble that guy. everything. Exactly. No, no, Follow but humble pies. Listen, listen, to me, listen to me. Everything to me has its moments. And things had to take those turns for it to become what it was and what it is right now. You yeah. know what I mean? So I can't complain. Because I know that I did something that turned out to be great. Okay, yeah. humble wumble. Let me ask no, you this one. No, this is the truth. This is the truth. Look, like, look at what uh, Chris Brown and Tyga and Piamia yeah. did. That's a thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Like, I couldn't have thought about yeah. that. You know what I mean? Out of so, all, out of your catalog, what's a song that said, "Ah, I probably could have did without." Is there? Do you have a lot, lot of those? There's a lot. That, yeah. There's a lot that I listen to now, especially like on. Things that I could have added more to make it sound better. Like, yeah. I'm always critiquing, oh, my God, I can't believe that I released that. That was horrible. You <laughs> know what I mean? I, I go through that all the time. Before we get up out of here, and I thank you for your time as well, because we're going to no definitely problem. kick it off after this. Do you still get goosebumps and chicken skin when you perform? And where was the most 
best place you've ever performed? Because I've, I've seen videos at One Love in New Zealand, but where has been the pinnacle moment for you to say, okay, I made it? I don't know. I, oh, humble, this humble. is a good one. This is a good one because I, I need to answer this correctly. Mm -hmm. I made it when I was 13 years old and decided that I wanted to sing for the rest of my life. That's when you knew. I made it. Yeah. That's the decision that I made. Yeah. And I made it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's as far as made it means. But as far as like audience, Hawaii will always be my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Forever and ever. They were the first ones to give me the love that I have today. So the love, they started from there. So me being a loyal person, I'll never, ever forget it. Yeah. And then the rest of of the the islands and the country started to catch on, but the biggest will always be One Love New Zealand. Ooh. If you guys haven't seen that, oh, go yeah. to YouTube uh, and watch Chant of the Islands. Viral, Vi the virality. Yeah, I don't even know if that's a word, but it's twenty five thousand of my people. You didn't even have to say a word. All people. Yeah. White, black, Chinese, all mixed in with our blood. Chicken like, skin for sure. It's show. just beautiful. It's like, yeah. damn, it's the most islanders <laughs> I've seen in one place. And you, and yes, I do get goosebumps every time. I got goosebumps right now. Yeah. Because I get goosebumps every time because this is what I was called to do. Yeah, this was definitely your calling. It being your calling, last words for the public watching you right now. Um. Gratitude. Come on, man. Come on, man. Shout out to my brother Fiji. Big up Fiji, man. The man, one and only. The one and only George Fiji Vicosa. We thank you, my brother. Because I'm telling y'all, man. We love y'all. We'll see you guys on the next one. Western Conference. We out. Peace. Boom, boom.